In this video, we'll take a look at a solar radiation case study from Henning Larsen Architects, which was the carbon light homes and hotels. And we're going to take a look at just creating a simple form, splitting it up and trying to create a balance where we have an equal amount of radiation to create a good daylight factor and good interior climate within inside the building. In this case study from Henning Larsen Architects, the Watts Carbon Light Homes and Hotels, I will try to explain how solar radiation analysis can be used to optimize the form and concept of the new development and how you can effectively use Vasari for looking at different concepts and, and optimizing the development. So the whole energy concept of this building here was to achieve an active 50% on-site reduction in carbon emissions. The ambition was to meet the gold award for DGNB, the German certification system, and the homes promote energy self-sufficient using passive solar heating and local energy production geothermal heat pump in combination with active district heating and air to water heat pumps for hot water and space heating. Furthermore, it was the ambition to design with a minimum average daylight factor of 3 to 5 percent throughout, which is three times greater than the code for sustainable homes requires, reducing the need for artificial lighting and promoting the occupant's health. So solar radiation can really be used for site planning where we can look at different parameters like compactness, orientation, portion of windows, areas, material used, etc. So what we try to geometrically optimize this building here for the use of natural daylight and passive solar gain, the strategy was to create an equal distribution of solar radiation for each apartment and hotel room because it's much easier to climate control a room with a mid-level exposure for 800 to 1000 watt per square meters compared to rooms directly orientated north-south between 700 and 1500 watt per square meter. So here again I just kind of went back to the starting point here. This was really kind of the first design we looked at and I just made three different design options. I started actually out in Ecotech, but it took me a bit of while to do the simulation, so I would rather wait with this study here till I'm pretty sure of the end result and then use this to document the analysis because it's a bit easier to control the output for numeric simulations and as well for showing the different uh, values on the model. I went into Vasari and I went to design option one and selected these phases here, did a summer one year solar study to kind of create the understanding for whole year and just a pretty low resolution. It won't give us as many iterations but just for this tutorial here it's not to waste time. So what you'll see here is that we have really all the, the largest amount of radiation on the south facade here, which is quite logical. But we want to kind of divide this building up and create a more equal distribution. So going looking at design number two, the building was broke up in four minor pieces, which of course increases the area, the exposed area, our surface area, and allows us to use more passive solar heating and passive light. Because of the well insulated constructions, it really, we don't have to think as much over doing it as compact, so this be a very good strategy to look at. So at the final result here, just went in and turned the buildings, kind of scoot them a bit up and down to create a equal distribution for all the different phases here in the model. This was really what we were looking for and this is just a good example of how we can apply solar radiation in the design process to create and minimize the, the need for artificial lighting and create an indoor environment that's easier to control and make some buildings that can be easily adapted to the existing context. 